Hi, this is Elijah Hernandez, Editor-in-Chief of The Echo, Cal Lutheran Student Newspaper. So, for this week's story on the podcast, Cal Lutheran Center for Cultural Engagement and Inclusion hosted a women leadership panel with the women leaders of Cal Lutheran on Tuesday, March 15th. This was held in honor of Women's History Month. Our reporter, Will Haddock, had the opportunity to attend this event to hear from panelists such as Crystalia Buchanan, Vice President of Talent, Culture, and Diversity, Dr. Brandy Yee, Director of Interdisciplinary Educational Studies, and President Lori Varlada. He is joining us today on the podcast to discuss his reporting on the event and tell us of some of the topics that were discussed during the event. My name is Will Haddock. I'm a senior at Cal Lutheran. Uh, my major is communications with an emphasis in film and TV. Um, and uh, this week, uh, the article I was assigned was um, on the Women in Leadership luncheon that took place uh, Tuesday at in the Kingsman Room at the uh, Student Union Building. Right. Uh, thank you. I know that this was something that you covered a little last minute. Yeah. Um, so upon walking onto the event, can you just talk about what the environment was like? I know they had food. Do you know what kind of food? Uh, yeah. So uh, I walked over to the building um, after you had texted me uh, about the event. Uh, I made sure to just like look decent um, before I went. <laughs> Um, and as I was going in, um, I ran into Dr. Varlada. Uh, she was a bit busy this week, so I was not able to get an interview with her, but um, I, I asked her about the event a little, and then we walked in. I think I, I want to say around like 12 or 13 uh, guests, not including the panelists that came. I believe uh, one or two uh, people came in about halfway through, um, but uh, everyone was just very warm and welcoming when I came in, and they let me um, take some food myself. Uh, it was falafel. Um, it was it was pretty good. Um, I'm not sure where they got it from, um, but it was nice to just have something to eat while I was I was covering a story, you know. So uh, I, I started the recording right as around the event began, um, and. Uh, essentially, um, everyone introduced themselves. They uh, they gave their preferred pronouns um, and just like said what year they were. Or uh, for the in the panelist case, uh, just their their job. Um, and uh, so Julie Lee, uh, I'm not sure her involvement with her campus. I, I reached out to her as well. I haven't heard back. But uh, she was the um, host of the panel. Um, so she had a lot of really good questions that she asked them. I think um, they're all very insightful. And, um, it, you know, each, each, each guest, the event ran for an hour and a half. So uh, each, each guest kind of really just got to delve into their personal experiences on who they were. They all, they all talked about their backgrounds growing up. Um, uh, President Farlot obviously uh, came and she touched on just being um, someone that kind of grew up in a place where a lot of the uh, work uh, was just kind of male dominated. Her, her parents kind of wanted her to be a doctor, teacher, um, but yeah, some, some sort of job like that. And um, essentially she, she decided, I think, her freshman year of college that to be become a philosophy major. And then um, I believe she um, switched over to postmodern feminism after that. Um, but she, she basically shared that um, the whole kind of the whole inspiration for her to become a university president was just her, her first job um, working at, um, as a residence hall director, she she basically she was a residence hall director there, and um, she got to meet the the university president um, when he, he spoke to them, and um, she said that she was just very excited about just the big kind of changes and like um, yeah the big changes going on on campus, and that um, because of that 
um, it inspired her to, she said she wanted to have a job like that. And so she said that she didn't let it affect every decision, but, you know, she, she had her sights set on that since she was, she was younger. Right. And I, mm-hmm. I think as a woman, it's definitely challenging to get into those kind of authority positions. Um, so I'm sure that she had a lot to touch on about that. Um, I've also never had a falafel, so I'm not sure how good that was. But anyway, now that <laughs> how was it? How was the falafel? It was it was really good. Um, I've had uh, Mediterranean food before, but like never falafel. So um, okay. well, it's yeah, something that I should try. So now we have food out of the way. To clarify, this panel was for in honor of Women's History Month, right? So you said that you didn't have a chance to interview Barlotta. Um, Mm -hmm. Can you talk about a little bit about who the other panelists were and what they touched on? Yeah, sure. Um, The other two panelists were uh, Dr. Brandy Yi, who is the... um, um, She is the Assistant Professor and Director of... Uh, interdisciplinary education studies at Cal Lutheran. And then um, Crystalia Buchanan, who is the vice president of talent, culture, and diversity. Uh, I ended up having a pretty good interview with her um, on Thursday. Um, and uh, she, she kind of just uh, touched on what she had discussed on the, the panel a bit more. And she also, um, uh, yeah, she, she kind of just delved into um, just her her experience in the business. Um, she worked as both an educator and then um, for a while she was the um, uh, director of inclusion and diversity at Honda. And so um, at Honda, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, uh, she, she's she's spoken highly of Varlata, um, and uh, she's. She's enjoying her work here. And um, <clears throat> at the very end of the interview, um, she just asked me about anything I've heard because she said that she wanted to just, you know, she wants to know what's going on on campus and um, try to fix fix problems that people might be having. Right. Did any of the panelists happen to talk about any challenges that they faced as women in their industries uh yes well i know that um uh, crystalia buchanan spoke very highly of her mother so did so did president barlotta i they, they both kind of touched on despite the fact that their parents were not college educated that they were very wise in their own ways and very educated in a non-formal way Um, I know that in my interview with um, Crystalia Buchanan, she said that um, because she's a first generation immigrant. Um, She came to the country when she was six. Um, But she mentioned that um, when she was working at Honda, uh, a lot of problems didn't necessarily stem from her being an immigrant, but more so her being a woman and just like trying to be taken seriously. They, they, They gave advice to students just essentially saying you know like people are gonna question why you're there sometimes depending on if you're in a male-dominated field and so really just being at the top of your game is is a good thing you know because that way you can you have something to show that it's not just you know it's not just something that you know they they were hired because the company needs to be more diverse if that makes sense. Right. So it's more letting their efforts speak for itself and like kind of not having the ability to slack off because then it could probably fulfill like the stereotypes that people have of women in business. Yeah. Cool. Um, I personally, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I personally think it is, is very unfair how it's slated like that but I think that in terms of just like the field a lot of jobs you know there's the whole like uh 70 women make 70 cents for every dollar that a man makes you know it's it's something that like the um 
it only recently, like in terms of history, you know, women um, really kind of became an integral part of the workforce during World War II, but, you know, they became more acknowledged and recognized um, uh, in the 60s and 70s with the um, a new, I think it was second or third wave feminism. Um, but um, I know that um, a lot of, I'm sure, I can't speak from personal experience, a lot of women, you know, feel overlooked or, um, you know, not taken as seriously as their male uh, co-workers. Right. I think that's definitely a challenge a, a lot of women face, especially in industries that are male dominated. Yeah. Um, I remember, I know that you mentioned how a lot of them talked about their mothers uh, and it's often the people that are immediate to us, uh, like the women who are immediate to us, that serve as our first or one of our first role models. So it's kind of like, even if they're not in business, they still leave an impact on you with like, they leave an impact where you absorb the traits that are useful to being the person that you are aside from just being in business. So those are always good things and good traits to absorb and have. Um, did anyone say anything that they like about being where they are or? Oh yeah. Um, let's see. I know that. Um, Crystalia Buchanan felt that um, the job that she was taking at Cal Lutheran, it wasn't necessarily about like money, fame, or power for her. It was more of just having the opportunity to just um, share what she has learned and, um, you know, what she's, what she's brought to Honda. I believe that uh, Brandy Yee said that coming to Cal Lutheran for the first time for her was kind of just like a breath of fresh air. So Crystalia spoke on, uh, passed on advice from her mother. Um, and um, basically her mother told her to live by her values. And so that's kind of the, uh, some of the advice that uh, Crystalia passed on. Um <clears throat> It was just that, um, you know, like finding something that aligns with your values is important, especially in terms of a uh, career. I think, you know, I think you want to be happy at a career and, you know, feel like you're, the work you're doing is contributing to something that you feel is important. Right. It's often those women or role models that are immediate to people that teach them the life lessons that they can't necessarily or won't necessarily learn in school or in business. So mm -hmm. that's, that's awesome that she said that. Um, and I don't want to keep you too long. So like in terms of the audience, were there only women there? Did you happen to talk to um, any person that attended um, to see how they, or why they were there, or why they felt it was important that they attended? Um, yeah, so I I was the only um, man there, but I talked to uh, a student, um, uh, Kelsey Washburn, um, who basically found out about the event 30 minutes before. But yeah, I think Kelsey just felt the, that it went really well. Um, she said she would be interested in going to other events similar to this. Um, and essentially the, the student response to the event was that um, they were glad it was an in-person kind of uh, open panel discussion rather than, you know, like a video presentation or something online. They felt that it, it had more personal touch because of that. Right, especially since we're making the transition from Zoom to in-person. Um... I think it allows for people to be more 
invested into what's going on they're there so yeah um thank you so much will it was great that you attended this and honestly great that these uh leaders held this event to create a discussion within more women leaders on campus so thank you for attending and thank you for coming on the podcast with us thank you for having me it, it's been a pleasure again Here's what else you need to know this week. Cal Lutheran will now be a home training facility for players of Angel City FC women's soccer team. Our reporter, Melody Truke, has more on the story. In features, the Missing Piece 10-Minute Play Festival performed a range of 10-minute plays and sold out their shows. Our reporter, Anna Norvalt, has more on the story. To stay up to date on the latest release stories, follow us on our social media. Our Instagram can be found at CLU Echo, and you can find us on Twitter at CLU Echo News. All the stories discussed in today's podcast can be found on CLU Thank you. Thank you.